Everyone goes to the sit down. But what about if someone just wants a casual West African yeah. dish? This is where you step in. We were trading. Mm-hmm. We done more money at the markets than we yeah. done in the in the shop. There's a reason why bottled Coca Cola is better. advertised in December by Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Woman, do you not want to be fighting with chicken bones? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Inside Events. We've got here Plantain Kitchen. I'm going to say Plantain. Yes, of course. You have to say Plantain. Plantain Kitchen for our fourth episode. Or Plantain. <laughs> but I always say, what are you planting? Plant. <laughs> <laughs> if they do say that. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we're here with Toby from Plantain Kitchen. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. I guess, Toby, start us off with why did you start a street food business? So it probably dated back to... I say 14, 15, mm-hmm. where, as you know, coming from a West African home um, and having a diverse mm-hmm. range of friends, my mum would cook for a party, for example, and um, all my friends would love it mm-hmm. and they'll end up taking some food home. Yeah. So as you grow up and you get into food and you go out on dates or you go out with your friends, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera, you start to see that there isn't that, West African Mm -hmm. cuisine influence or brand that you can, you know, get some food that your mum would make outside. So as that grew and that became a common occurrence, it really started to paint some questions as to why there's this massive gap in in West African cuisine Mm -hmm. being in these spaces. Yeah. So I used pretty much my frustration and my market research Mm -hmm. to really knuckle down and Planting Kitchen was born. It was a case of me doing something that represented West African cuisine, but doing it in such a simple form. Yeah. So people could understand it and it would be easy to mass market. A part of my research was to look at what is available Mm -hmm. and you couldn't really find anything in a box park. You couldn't really find anything in a Makato Metropolitano. You couldn't really find anything in a Vinegar Yard, for example that was able to be there, add something of value, Mm -hmm. give people an experience that they wouldn't have been able to taste. So it was all about, you know, going to the drawing board, rustling a few things up, understanding how we can make an impact, what product we can bring to the table, Mm -hmm. and really just focusing around the staple product as the core, and then building around it. So when I say building around it, I mean having that West African influence yeah. around various kind of products. For example, how do you make a West African inspired burger? People love burgers. Yeah. We can simply do a West African burger by adding plantain inside mm-hmm. it, for example, or adding a shito mayo, mm-hmm. for example. So it allowed me to really tap into my creative side of things. Mm-hmm. But when you tap into this way of thinking, you can kind of get overthrown by so many ideas so I think it's because I'm a Gemini I have like two personalities personalities. I have one that's courageous and always wants to go at 100 miles per hour Mm -hmm. and I have another individual that's like you know what Toby let's just focus on what we need to do to get to X then Y then Z etc 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 so it was all about me simplifying our products and me putting the brand in high footfall areas where people do not necessarily have the access Mm -hmm. to West African cuisine. So that's why we started at Markets. Nice. Because weekend markets are such a busy, high traffic destination. So it really allowed me to give people a product that they wouldn't have experienced before or they've had it. Mm -hmm on a holiday to West Africa or at a friend's house, but they haven't actually been able to have it from a brand. Mm -hmm. That's why I would always recommend markets as the best place to start uh, a food business because you can get live feedback. Yeah, um, interact with people. Interact with people, build your confidence as a person in terms of talking to people about your brand and why you do it. And... um, having that live feedback is, is is priceless because it gives you that motivation to go again next week. I can imagine. You know? So it's still been a key part of, of the business. And for me, I think I love being at the markets, being out in the sun, 
people enjoying your food, people taking pictures of your food in the sunlight. Like tagging them on Instagram. Tagging them on Instagram. Yeah, it's been it's been a really good kind of way of thinking to deliver a brand and bring it to market. Yeah, 100%. Because I was going to say, like, how have you seen sort of like the street food space change? Because, like, admittedly myself, like the yeah. first time that I tried Suya was yeah, through yeah. the Suya pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout yeah, out Jay. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout he, out he's, Jay. He's smashing Killing. it. But, like, the whole thing was, like, also I was talking to him about it because it's yeah, like, yeah. I have Ghanaian friends. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, tried, yeah, like, yeah. Jollof. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'd never tried Suya before. And we got talking about it and what came across was, like, the passion yeah. and, like, yeah. where it had originally come from. So, like, yeah. how have you seen the street food industry change as a whole since so, you started? So, in... I'd say 2020, it was actually very easy to get into markets. And in 2024, there's now a waiting list across pretty much every single market that is busy because people now understand the benefit of being a market trader as opposed to having your restaurant a permanent space because there's some traders that do the same money, revenue a week as people who own restaurants. Really? Absolutely. You trade Monday to Friday in a city, for example, you have five to 8,000 people within a five-hour time frame. Mm-hmm. You're not seeing that in a, in a restaurant because some of them only open in the evening. Yeah. You know, so now people are understanding that it's more beneficial for individuals to stick to being a market trader than having a permanent space. 100%. I've seen like a few things like I've read on- online about the way that the I guess like food industry in general is yeah, going yeah, where it's like yeah. it's either going to be these people like JKS who yeah. own like loads of individual brands yeah, yeah, but yeah, then they yeah, were saying yeah. it's a real rise of like the small yeah. independent ones yeah, 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 and like I guess because you're quite interesting the fact that you had a brick and mortar yeah. store essentially yeah, 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 in one yeah, of yeah. Your, the markets what is it that made you go, actually, this isn't for me. Maybe I should just try yeah. starting like market stalls instead. Because you seem to be like, yeah. it, it seems to be working really well yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but what was the decision behind so, it? So one of the the biggest, biggest thing that every restaurant owner, bricks and mortar owner will, would say is they do not want to be in a position where there's a fluctuation of footfall. Yeah. So there's nothing better then knowing on a Monday, I'm going to have a thousand people come into my shop mm-hmm. or be, let's say, be seen by a thousand yeah. people, guaranteed a thousand people. For example, at Canada Water Market on a Sunday, it cost me a hundred pounds for the pitch. Okay. I put two people, yeah. employ two pe- members of staff. Canada Water Market generates over, let's say, 2,000 people walking by. It's right by the station. Right by the station. People walking by local people around the area. And when I was at my previous bricks and mortar location, Mm -hmm. the building would see only 150 people. Wow. On a Sunday average from 12 Mm -hmm. till 9. You think to yourself, it's less stress to do the markets Mm -hmm. and it's guaranteed people. Yeah. Why am I bothering? It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Every single Sunday... We was trading. Mm-hmm. We done more money at the markets than we yeah. done in the in the shop yeah. on a Sunday. Having a family and being a new dad, you kind of have to, you know, wake up and say, you know what, this is not the bricks and mortar side isn't worth the mm-hmm. stress, especially in the summer. Yeah, no one really wants to be in a building eating food when it's twenty it, degrees, twenty five degrees. Outside. Listen, everyone wants to be outside, socializing with their family, taking a day trip mm-hmm. to the market grabbing some food, whether that's planting, kitchen yeah. or, or anything else. And it's a whole day out. It's a whole day out experience. And do you find it's like easier to interact with your customers when it's a market store, yeah. whereas when you're in like one of those big market halls? Yeah. Do you find that sometimes where your branding gets like lost yeah, in like yeah, the yeah. noise, yeah. whereas when you're yeah. speaking face to face, it's a bit easier? Yeah. So speaking face to face, getting the live feedback and people really showing up and supporting every single Sunday. Yeah. Is, is pretty much priceless. And I think every market trader that has been consistent in, in a space will get that live interaction. Mm-hmm. And that's the fuel, you know. Yeah. That's the fuel to keep you going, to keep optimising, to keep trying to do the best you can for these people that are showing up for yeah. you and that every loyalty. single Sunday. That loyalty, you know. In a bricks and mortar space, it was a little bit different because, yes, you do have, you know, a different range of, of customers 
coming. And yes, you can do your due diligence to, you know, drive your social media mm-hmm. channels and do some various t- types of optimization with your events. Or, but you can say, yeah, depending on what location you're in, for example, a Makato, where yeah. you have 100, and f- 100 brands all in one space, if you're not standing out with socials and you're not on it every day, it's, it's you can get lost you in could, that noise. You could get lost in that in that noise for sure. Yeah, because you don't really have that range of people that are coming to mm-hmm. find you. Mm-hmm. You're getting people that are coming in for a vibe. Yeah, and pretty much choosing what they're most comfortable with. Yeah, so it's it's a it's an interesting con- contrast having to having been on both sides mm-hmm. of the playing fields. Um, but I would say for me, the market side of things are, are it's very, much better for you. Is, yeah. And that's so good. And like, obviously, there is high highs to markets where people yeah. come. But like, what is it that like, maybe when a day is not going so well, mm. maybe if the market's not as busy, maybe the weather's bad. Like mm. we do live in England yeah, as much as we have like, lovely yeah, weather. Yeah, yeah. We also have 10 times as many bad days. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How do you stay motivated? What is it that keeps you going throughout that time? You know what it is? I think it's a it's a general positive approach. So Charlotte, who's who's my girlfriend, she always says to me, if you're going through anything, it's not going to rain forever. Yeah. You know, it's impossible for it to rain for 365 days in a year. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you just take it as a as an opportunity to to really optimize and stay you know, fluid in terms of, okay, if it rains on a day and I'm anticipating rain, what could we do to drive people to our market? Mm-hmm. I always say to myself, if if any bad days occurred, what could I have done to help alleviate that? Mm-hmm. So whether that's being active on TikTok, for example, being active on Instagram, letting yeah. people know, oh, listen, if it's it's raining today, but come out, we'll give you a free umbrella. If you buy a if you buy a bowl one, Have you bowl tried two, that bowl before? three. No, we haven't tried it before, <laughs> but this is like an idea where people will be like, you know what? He's actually making an effort yeah. to and I feel gravitate to people that are trying yeah. to do something different. Or 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 pon ponjos. Pon Ponchos, ponchos. ponchos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Planted kitchen ponchos when it rains. Honestly, I people do. People are gonna think, be queuing up. People will queue up. <laughs> people people queuing queuing up. up. <laughs> it's so, I guess people with that, it's up. like Thinking on your feet and being like, yeah, you have to, you have to. Weather is unpredictable. I think this is like the nature of like public yeah. events yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. What can you do to like yeah, yeah. work yeah. around this yeah. and make the most of it? Yeah. yeah. So, for example, if it's p- p- um, pissing down, listen, I'm gonna do a TikTok of me just dancing in the rain, <laughs> eating my jollof rice. <laughs> you know, one thing I've realized about social media and stuff is the power of promoting positive emotion. Yeah. So, for example. I can put a video on my story right now of me like laughing or singing or something like that. Five people are going to look at it and be like, no, it's, this guy's funny. <laughs> also, you do, do have quite I'm an saying? infectious laugh yeah, as well. I think that does yeah, help yeah, as well. This guy's funny, man. Like, um, I, think, I, I was in a bad mood. I just got a passive aggressive email. Now I've seen Toby's uh, Instagram yeah. stories. I'm buzzing. <laughs> listen. Toby, tell us about what these are listen, and why they're listen, different. I've got to move the mic for this one, you know. So, we have Ghanaian Fanta. <laughs> we have Ghanaian Coca Cola. These have traveled over 10,000 kilometers to be here today. The difference is it's all in a taste, right? So, anything in a glass bottle tastes better, yeah. more succulent, more juicy, more <laughs> fruity, more everything, right? So, we've got the Fanta. It is a higher sugar content Fanta. So no sugar tax in Ghana. Yeah, of course. You know. <laughs> but also, it. I think it's actually made from actual oranges. And then Coca-Cola, I'm not even going to talk too much about it, but there's a reason why bottled Coca-Cola Tastes is better. advertised in December by Santa Claus. That's all I'm going to say. You know, Open. they never took. They never advertise bottles in the summer, do they? Why did they always do it in the winter? So you can crack it open, like right. AS. <laughs> yeah, put it to the mic. You ready? And it sounds different as well. This one. <laughs> and the other one. Different sounds for different products as well. This one's different. Look. See, that was. <laughs> 
Okay, that's for you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Eye contact on the cheers. No, you have to. Yeah. And then drink as well. Yeah. Oh, that does taste nice. As That's jo- like as John- Jose Mourinho says, if I talk, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good, right? Yeah, it's really, really nice. Different levels. It's really, really nice. Different levels. I was just going to go back onto like social media because like yeah. what I found so surprising is like the episode that we put out last time about Bait Bird. Mm. We had so many shout other suppliers. Them out, by the way. Yeah, obviously shout out sick, to both of them, Vimmel and Shy. Like yeah. great guests, but also just like had really great stories. But when we were sharing it, we probably got the most love from other suppliers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which and it was like commenting like, "Oh my yeah. god, this is huge!" People were sharing their podcast episode. Yeah. Like, but also Bait Bird, they were so happy to like shout people out, yeah, like yeah, Gully, yeah. like Hanoi yes. Kitchen, who like had stepped in and yeah, like yeah. helped them at the end of the day, and like. What was so lovely about that was that there's a real sense of community, yeah, I think, in the street food industry, definitely. which I really think is quite unique yeah. compared to other industries that definitely, we're in. Definitely. Have you felt that love as oh, well yeah. since starting 100%. your business? So it was only just a few weeks ago when we done Peckham Gala. Mm-hmm. And obviously it was our first ever festival. Mm. First ever. With us, wasn't it? It was yeah, one of our first events. Ever. First ever. So shout out together as well. <laughs> For accepting us. Uh, and uh, yeah, pa- Pack and Gala, again, when, when we talk more about it, it was probably one of the the best achievements. Really? That was like your made, I've made that it That was like, not even really I've made it, but is a case of the power of planting kitchen mm. is actually greater than I thought. Um, but we'll get back onto that like later. Oh, no, no, carry, you can carry on. Like, um, oh, yeah. It's, it sounds like an interesting story. And I know, like, I unfortunately wasn't there, but yeah. our co-founder, Hugo, was itch like, your food, he was yeah. like, was the best that yeah. I've had at a festival. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he was literally shouting your praises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, so, how was Gala? Yeah, so for me, it was, it was all because of the weeks and months before mm. getting to Gala yeah. in regards to um, not in my bricks and mortar location mm-hmm. before before that and then obviously going into litigation and losing that that mm. battle so if you can imagine being in a situation where you wake up one day and the house that you're staying in mm-hmm. your landlord changed the locks yeah and you have all of your stuff in there and stuff that you invested stuff in. that you invested in your pictures, you name it, everything is stuck in there. And you are not in a position to get your belongings mm-hmm. out of there. And then you you put your faith into a system and then you lose that battle. Yeah. And you are no longer, you know, valid mm-hmm. in in getting your staff and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then to make it worse, your landlord um puts in another tenant in your house yeah and then uh you see a video of of your your bedroom mm-hmm. being repainted yeah. with a picture of you and mm-hmm. your your dog etc 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 yeah, yeah. so you know it, it was a it was a huge mental challenge in terms of trying to stay positive and believing in what we've accomplished so far and when I was away in Germany waiting for the arrival of my daughter. I was still getting Instagram messages. From this from, company? No, no, no. From uh, customers. Oh, were you? Yeah. Saying like, where are you? Saying, where are we? We can't find you on ins- uh, on delivery or, or oh, Uber no. Eats. You know, so I'm seeing this and I'm thinking to myself, these people don't have access to West African cuisine mm-hmm. anymore. We made that happen. Yeah. People made that happen, Mm -hmm. you know, by supporting us and by believing in what we're doing. Yeah. So I have to use that energy and forget about what's happened and pivot the business again and go again and see what happens, you know. So if you can imagine going from losing everything, um, two and a half months, no business. Yeah. And then still being able to lean on individuals in your network to mm. say listen like i've got a festival yeah can you borrow me this i'll pay you but after etc yeah. etc et kind of um and you know like because i've had 
like super good relationships with suppliers yeah. and, and, and people, close friends. They also believe in planting kitchen as well. So it made it even easier mm. where people are saying, listen, don't worry about anything. How much you need, how much yeah. you want, et cetera, et cetera. So then, you know, um, in the lead up to Peckham Gala, I was teasing on Instagram, teasing on TikTok. I saw you, I've seen your like little short yeah, yeah. stories of like the prep beforehand, yeah, yeah, of, like yeah. what you're, yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on behind so the scenes. Teasing, teasing, teasing. And then it was more of a case of, for me, in that moment, it was something that I've never done before yeah. in terms of doing a day in a life and being consistent, you know, and really documenting the journey from having nothing, yeah. going from having everything removed to now kind of restarting mm-hmm. again. And then in that process, I felt an accomplishment in terms of delivering these series, these episodes. Yeah. And then going into Gala, it was... You know, some moments in Ghana on the first day, I had to step out and just go for a walk and just be like... Was it overwhelming? Yeah. Aww. I was literally like, this is actually crazy. You know? And then, again, what what put the cherry on top was, you know, the feedback that we got and the exposure that we got to, to different kind of mm-hmm. people. So, for example, you said that your directors came, the Ghana directors came as well. I was there just last week. And then you had sound engineers coming mm. over and saying we appreciate what you're doing because oh. we do festivals all the time mm. but we don't have access to West African cuisine yeah. at festivals so you know it's like when you sit back and you're just like I could have given up I could have packed it in but like look look, look where you are now look at what it is man look at what it's you know about to about to do yeah. so that that there is Gala was going from what happened mm-hmm. doing what we done you know, re-engaging with everyone, re-engaging with people on, on social media as mm. well. And then re-engaging with some customers as well, really? existing customers that yeah. we had. That was like a massive, like, yo, Toby. This is this is why you, why you do it. This is this is why we're doing what we're doing, yeah. you know. This is why we're doing it. So you need to carry on and, you know, work harder, oh, work even more. That's such yeah. a moving story. And I think a lot of our street food suppliers can probably relate to that yeah, because, definitely. like, when... If you're in a company, if something goes wrong, you have managers, you have directors, mm-hmm. you can lean on and go, actually, something's not going and yeah. well. How can you yeah, help? But, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you are your boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, how yeah. do you even get, like, perspective on things? Who do you reach out to when yeah. things don't go your way, which seem to have unfortunately happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was tough. It was probably the the second most toughest thing. Mm-hmm. But I think it was more of about the, the mental thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everyone has some sort of ego. You know, and I think ego's important because it, it's your fuel, you know. It's your, like, gas canister, yeah. I would say. And if someone can just take that off you and throw it in in the mud, mm-hmm. you know, it, it really it really uh, affects you yeah. mentally. It was a crazy experience, you know. Yeah. Never been in court in my life. Yeah. And that was the first time. First time. Yeah. Well, it's so first glad time. that, like, Peckham, uh, like, Gala seemed to be, like, yeah. that up again. Yeah. Because you've got other... Events yeah. lined yeah, up this year, haven't you? Yeah, We've yeah. got Pride. Pride, Saturday. I'm not going to lie, I've got anxiety about that one, you know, because it's a one-day event, you know, so you have to be on top of the game, like, straight away, be ready. Oh, I'm sure you will. Yeah, 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 but I think we're never going to be 100%, no. but we can be 99.7. Of course. You know, you can keep the 0.03%, <laughs> you know. But yeah, we're, we're gearing up for that. The team are ready, which is the most important mm-hmm. thing. We've got a new new merch as well. New merch. You know? How did this design all come from? Because we, last one we had like a big merch design focus yeah, yeah, yeah. from Bait Bird, obviously yeah, with their yeah. stuff. How did this come about? So what this it? is actually crazy. We introduced tote bags in 2021. I got someone to do an illustration of a, of a bowl of food mm-hmm. that we sell. And she also produce this logo mm. as well so i was hunting for like something to just give us like a spring in our step for the summer yeah. and i came across this in in one of my folders and i was like yeah we're gonna use this mm-hmm. because it's, it's got vibrant. very striking colors yeah it's vibrant and it's the summer so it was a case of reusing this logo putting it on t-shirts and then putting daily frying on the back mm-hmm. the reason why we have daily frying on the back is a twist on daily paper the brand but we also fry a plantain daily. Yeah. 
And a lot of people have given us so much good feedback. On the plantain on specifically. On the plantain specifically, specifically. Right? This is because we fry it on the day. Yeah, so it's like fresh, it's not chewy. Fresh, it's not chewy, it's not dry, you know. Oh, it's so nice and sweet. Nice and, and sweet Oof. and soft and, and it's really caramelized. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And I was thinking as well, like at a festival, like do you think you stand out? You know what's you know what's interesting is there there always used to be this saying in restaurant business mm-hmm. development where they used to be like oh, it's too niche. We're not going to... We shouldn't launch our business because it's too niche. Yeah. But in festivals, being niche... Is good. Is good. Yeah. You know? So, again, with high mainstream cuisines, there's, they say, an 80% chance that if you was going to a festival on Saturday, you would have had something of a burger or pizza or pasta... Something very before, beige. ...of the day before. Yeah. You know? So, naturally... I think in this day and age, people are a little bit more conscious on what they eat. Me, mm-hmm. personally, I don't like to eat something two days in a row. Yeah, I'm the same as I well. I hate that, you know? So a lot of people will actively try to find something different than yeah. they had yesterday. Or, naturally, a lot of people that will come to a festival and be like, you know what, listen, let's try some West African mm-hmm. food. And a lot of the times, to give them a level of assurance, a lot of people will go on their Instagram. Yeah. And see what other people have said. See what other people have said. I'm, a, I'm guilty of that, like TikTok see, reels. Exactly. See see what they look like on Instagram and then be like, okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. These guys are 30. Yeah. Less. <laughs> Most of the time, this is what happens, I promise you. Yeah, well... People will come, and I've seen it. I've seen it. They'll come, and like, okay, menu's all right. Brand is all right. <laughs> Food's looking good. Yeah. Food's smelling good. Then they'll walk up, see whatever else is out there they're on their phone the planting kitchen on instagram mm, blah blah check blah, it and they're, they're, they're like yep yeah, good certified let's try it and then when they try it they're like Psh, yeah amazing do you think that's especially like with more i guess like non-traditional street food like mm. i think I, I saw an interview ages ago with will poulter who is like an actor and he was saying something about how african and caribbean cuisines are like at the time, I don't think it was anyone from Mission Star mm. with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. was saying it. I can't. I think it might have been. He was like wax, waxing lyrical about yeah, West African cuisine, and he, he was saying like, you guys should try it. Yeah, I can't. Something remember which, like I think that. it might have been off menu, but I yeah, could be yeah, wrong on that. Yeah, where I've he seen came it. on, blonde so, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah blonde yeah, white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he was saying that he was like, "We don't have a mission." I know that's changed recently. Yeah, Shashuri Shah. Yeah, Shishuri. just changed uh, though. She's my auntie, you know. Is she? Yeah, I went. I went to hers. On my birthday last year, when she had a pop up in London Bridge, yeah, man. Is she a big influence? Do you think on like, like like motivating you? So, do you know what it is? It's she's a massive influence and definitely a big motivation. But I have a problem with not many options being on a casual dining field. Yeah, everyone goes to the sit down. This is where you step in. Exactly. Everyone goes to the sit-down, but what about if someone just wants a a, a casual West African yeah. dish similar to wasabi? Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there isn't that option mm-hmm. at the moment. So my thing is, I've seen that, that area, that field, and the way we've customised and optimised everything, mm-hmm. we can be the perfect fit for that yeah. grab and go kind of vibe 100% and it works in a city because we trade in in Monument mm-hmm. on a Thursday and we're one of the busiest really? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy and uh, yeah all of this kind of stuff is it just you know beasts up the, the data mm-hmm. and it beasts up the confidence in if we do decide to go yeah. bricks and mortar heavy this, this is a potential avenue we can go into because we know it would work mm-hmm so it's it's more about, okay, Toby, let's study wasabi for a little bit. Let's understand where they're located. Yeah. You know, they're located in they're underground. Like, yeah, quite by, um, always near a, like a train station or an underground always station. By, always by. Yeah. You know. What, like, what's the best selling item, I guess, like on your menu and how have you, I guess, catered your menu towards a grab and go yeah. culture? Because like, Rice a good is not really like what yeah, you would stereotypically yeah. think is like grab and go because yeah, yeah. it's usually like you have to yeah, eat yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's a that's a really good question. <laughs> Sorry to put you on this. No, no, no. It's it's actually amazing because there's actually been a journey from the best selling bowl. Yeah. So 
in 2020, we were using chicken on the bone. Chicken on the bone, when you put it on the grill, yeah. it's 45 minutes to f- cook properly. So now we've moved on to boneless chicken thighs. Boneless chicken thighs also hold flavour mm-hmm. much more better. Yeah. And in this day and age, as a lady as well, they don't want to be fighting with the bone. I'm sorry. <laughs> they, women do not want to be fighting with chicken bones. <laughs> Especially, the way you're like walking along, yeah, especially yeah, like the office, exactly. it's like practicality. Yes, we have to be practical. Yeah. We have to be practical in what we do, you know, and we have to optimise as much as we mm-hmm. can and where we can. So the reason why we're so fast and the reason why we can cater to the grab and go, especially at a market, is because we cook everything on a day. Yeah. We cook everything on a day. We put everything on a bamboo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have our live grill station. A little bit of action. People love seeing things being cooked, mm-hmm. chopped on a grill, nice and fresh, flavours everywhere. And people automatically gravitate to that. Mm-hmm. You know, so in terms of how we can fill that West African cuisine grab and go concept, it's basically already been done. I was about to say, like, there's a lot from that that seems to, like, going from markets to public events. Yeah. It's probably why you've found Garlo yeah. quite easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, not easy, I don't want to say that. That's kind of the bad word. But, like, it, what you're doing at Marcus, it was very, very yeah, adaptable yeah, yeah. to festivals. Yeah. There's a lot of similarities yeah. because you get peak crushes yes. and then you get lulls. Yeah, yeah. And it's how do you make sure that people are being served quickly? Because as good as a queue is for, yeah. like, marketing, yeah. people don't like to queue. They... If, if I'm seeing a big queue, I'm not going to go there. Equally, people love a queue because it's like, okay, they must be onto something. So, like, yeah. did you find that you were like, oh, because I've done this, like, I'm used to sort of, like, those batches yeah. of activity, I, I guess. Got, I've got a funny story. Go on. Right. We always love a funny story. <sighs> this is this is actually... When I look back at it... Is it funny for you, like, on you? I think it'll be funny for, for everyone okay. in this room as well. So... <laughs> When we restarted markets. Yeah. When was that? Last year. Last year. So I was so we was operating at the markets and we was operating our bricks and mortar site. Okay. From last year, May. So this is when I when I think about it, I cannot believe I was literally doing this. Doing both. Doing both, right? So for example, on a Thursday we had Monument Market. Mm. I would do it by myself. Just you? Just me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Just me, right? So I would prep in the morning. Fry. No, 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 no. So prep the jollof yeah. the jollof rice. So cook the jollof yeah, rice. Yeah. Cook the oxtail. Cook the vegetable stew when we done vegetable stew. And um season up the chicken the the day before, give it a nice mm-hmm. marination and then take everything over to Monument Market on a Thursday. And then I would set up. Right. Bearing in mind, right, equipment wise, we wasn't really there, you know, and I wasn't able to anticipate the kind of volume that we was able to generate mm-hmm. when I was doing it by myself. But as you know, we're here. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, we can I can manage it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So then, um, if you can imagine, I was frying plantain in a in a wok. Yeah. Right. So if you can imagine we're going, I'm doing basically 80 orders by myself. In a very short amount of time. In a very short amount of short amount of time. And plantain, you know, as you can see in our markets that we have now, we've got a freestanding fryer. Mm-hmm. So some days I would open up, everything's going well, nice and smooth. Yeah. I'm frying the plantain, I'm serving the customers, I'm taking the orders, yeah. I'm grilling the chicken, everything's all in simultaneously. Then when it hits 12 or 12 30. It's game set match. Queues start developing. I've yeah. got like 30 people in a queue. Because I'm frying plantain in a wok, once I've done frying it and I'm using a portable um, cooker, it takes about 10 minutes for it to reheat again. Okay. So I had a couple of aunties, you know, saying to me, yo, what's going on? What do you mean there's no plantain? Your plantain kitchen, you really can't get plantain? I was like, oh, we have to wait for the oil to fry. They're getting angry at me. I'm like, listen, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Please forgive me. Then I was doing that by myself for about five weeks. And I said, listen, I need to do this so I can just reinvest and get a proper fryer. Mm -hmm. Finally got to that stage where 
I was able to reinvest and get a twin fryer. Listen, plantain was getting fried in two seconds. Boom, 200 degree oil. <laughs> two seconds, finish, boom. Next. <laughs> Literally, we went from, I could serve 80 customers by myself to like 120 by myself. But at that point, I said, listen, I'm getting someone else in yeah. because I'm not going to kill myself. My back's getting destroyed. Just like running the around. The oil's splashing on my arms. I'm getting burnt everywhere. Yeah. High rush. Yeah. But it just shows you, you know, sometimes it's better to hold off on making such a big investment at the start because you don't know whether it's going to be off. well or not, you know. So, of course, I had to suffer a bit. But now we're in that position where we've invested into such good equipment that a festival, for example, is 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 clockwork and yeah. it's easy. It's a it's a real. I think it's a double edged kind of sword, you know, because you do suffer, but it does work out and pay off for not just markets, mm-hmm. but for festivals yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I used to get the grillings from the aunties every week. They say they used to come in the morning and say to me, "Listen, <laughs> if I come and there's no plantain, we're gonna They'll have a chat." They're giving me that real like, <laughs> listen. There's make nothing sure more critical than aunties, I tell you like, that. Make sure everything is, you know. I said, listen, come early, please. But that also showed me about people's time threshold, especially mm-hmm. the city workers, where they are only planning to wait for a maximum of five minutes. Yeah. If you do not serve them in five minutes, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. You know, so everyone says, yeah, a queue is a queue is good, but getting through the queue is better. When you're getting through the queue, sometimes we're just like, we don't have a queue. Because we're getting through it so quickly. And then at the end of the day, when we look at the numbers, we're like, Psh. Yeah. We didn't even kind of break a sweat, you know? Okay. Uh, is there any idols or, like, people in the street food industry that you want to shout out? We've touched on the community and, like, giving that praise. I think it's always better when it comes from another supplier. Yeah. I would say, first and foremost, uh, 081 Pizzeria. So it's owned by my good friend, Andrea. Shout so out. shout out, Andrea. 081 Pizzeria. We got a collab coming very very soon Have as you? well so like plantain kitchen and pizza pizza yeah so we're doing a oxtail pizza launching on july the 15th Where so it? look out for it so it's gonna be selling at his pizzeria on peckham rye and we actually want to invite some of the together team to come oh. and come and try it as well because again i've always had this passion about bridging the gap and being mm. super creative with west african cuisine yeah, yeah. And Andrea, like he is, his pizzas are inspired by Naples, is mm. where he's from. So, uh, we're super, super buzzing about it. And yeah, he's he's just a real super hard worker. And you know, when you see someone that's able to work hard, and you think you're working mm. hard yourself, you look at you, you look at the other person, you're like, listen, I think I need to yeah. step up a little bit more. Um, and yeah, he's been pretty much a good friend of mine since 2021. He's gone on to open up his restaurant that's been trading since 2023 nice and he's literally just getting bigger and bigger he's basically his pizza his pizzas are basically rated top 50 in europe in europe in europe yeah well we didn't have to go there yeah so you guys are all going to be invited um to try the pizza we're going to make like a real we're going to over exaggerate um the the concept and the mm-hmm. idea behind what we've created because I feel you know in London you can't really get a good oxtail pizza no so we're gonna do that so you mean like some yeah. no- Nollywood <laughs> in the back <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, we have this idea. I'm gonna put him in a Nigerian kit, and I'm gonna have like a, uh, a, a Italy, the football, the football, yeah, football kit, that, the... Italy kit, and then obviously he's gonna speak some um, Gar or Ibo. And I, I'm going to speak some Italiano oh. as a little, you know, introduction into the pizza, yeah. bringing that kind of vibe. You know, we just want to make it fun. We want to make it enjoyable, exciting, so people can be like, you know what? Let's try an Oxo pizza today, yeah. you know? And then I'm going to shout out um, another good friend of mine called Lungi, who owns the Treats Club, who has also she's just announced. Dubai. Yeah, she just announced she's moving to Dubai. Yeah. And she's another one where I looked at and I said, listen, um, I've got to kind of step up my game mm. a little bit more, you know, because, you know, when you see people that are working so hard and you can connect with them so easy and they end up being your friend, yeah. you know. So I remember I followed the Treats Club and they were like popping off, popping off. It's got brick and mortar stores. Yeah, bricks and mortar store on Hackney. And then you've got a little plantain kitchen who's 
basically on delivery from his kitchen at yeah. home and he's doing markets but she still was giving me the time of the day Aww. you know so you know those kind of people you got to keep close to your to your to your heart and yeah always look at them for for inspo and and they're like your kind of if you switch off you can't switch off because they're not switching yeah. off kind of vibe yeah also another person is my girlfriend oh and your daughter as well yeah my daughter oh yeah newborn daughter newborn baby oh yeah how old she, is she now she's two months oh yeah so she's my inspo as well because i didn't realize how hard women have it in like motherhood not 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 just that so it kind of just re- made me realize that you know before my daughter was born i was like living my life mm. but now i kind of have a purpose now you know yeah for for them too so Shout out her. Yeah. Shout out pair of them. Yeah. Shout out Zuzu Bear. Yeah. <laughs> Two queens. Two shout, queens. Shout, shout out both of them. Yeah. And then um, pretty much also Jackson as well. Jackson Black Eats, man. He's, yeah. He's he's done something. He's huge for Yeah. Them. So he's what he's done and what he's created and how he's done it, man. It's just top, top, top yeah, tier. Completely so, agree. Shout out to, to Jackson. I got a good relationship with him as well. He's had our food before, and because they've got now Black Eats in Woolwich, because yeah, it used yeah. to be Bohemia Place, but I think it outgrew it yeah, very, outgrew very quickly. It. Yeah. So now it's at yeah, Woolwich, man. and it's like a full on weekend. Full on, full on. So yeah, shout shout out Jackson, man, because 100%. he's he's believed in what what we were doing. Yeah, because Black Eats, I think, is like for anyone the yeah, directory yeah, yeah. of like black yeah, yeah, businesses. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants yeah, to go yeah, there, yeah, yeah. can shout them out. And early especially enough. it's like. As as well as that, it's it's the food available, which is also, you know, something that you're never ever gonna get anywhere in London. Yeah, yeah. Not that kind of selection. Yeah. So, yeah. Should we show you off the merch? This is a it, this is a bit of a preview, isn't it? Because this, this is, is new stuff. So this is new stuff. So this is new, only, exclusive. So, listen to this. <laughs> I'm the only person <laughs> in the world that's wearing this t-shirt. <laughs> Do you know that? <laughs> Literally, how many people are there in the world, Olivia? In total, seven in total, billion. seven billion, seven billion people, <laughs> and no one else is wearing a t-shirt like this today, with the planting kitchen logo on the top, and daily daily frying on the back. Yeah, one of one, baby. <laughs> okay, so now, also, Shah illustrate who um who created these for for me. Um, yeah, she's amazing. Uh, she turned these over like quite quickly, and like it probably looks like a it looks those so kind of cool. t shirts that you get from like a Supreme or something. They put in a plastic uh, kind of cover, and uh, yeah, let's open it up, man. Go on, do an, an unboxing. I've got two, I've got two, but I thought, you know, just in case. Yeah, one for Bella as well. One for Bells. <laughs> so we've got two mediums there, so we're going to do an unpacking live. <laughs> so do you, this one as well? Yeah, yeah, do both. Okay, <laughs> so there you go, man. It's fresh. Oh my god, everyone's si- summer vibes, daily frying, planting kitchen, a nice refresh of the brand after two and a half months away. So we know you had to come back a little bit fresh, you know, fresh, fresh to death. There Look at that! It. Is there you have it, and one's for you, Bells. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. When well, I'll be wearing this go. at Glastonbury. Yeah. Manifest, manifest. There you have it, man. <laughs>